This is Vern Venom Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. One reason Jesus of Nazareth called his followers to righteousness is that the alternative is so much trouble. This actually happened in Los Angeles. True story, two men drove into one of those drive through hamburger stands one night and ordered soft drinks to go. United Press reported this. Then as the soft drinks were being prepared, one of the men got out of the car and walked up to the girl at the takeout window and said, give me all your money, and if you think I'm kidding, I'll show you I'm not. The girl, who was 18 years old, handed him a fistful of $1 bills and watched as this man got back into his car. He proceeded to start the engine, but then suddenly the car stalled and wouldn't start again. After sitting there and turning the ignition key for a while with no results, the driver sheepishly got back out of the car walked up to the counter, handed the girl her money, and said, take it back, and please don't tell anything about this to anyone. The last the girl saw of the two men, they were pushing their car off down the street. It is by far enough trouble trying to do good in this world. But if you think you have troubles trying to be good, just consider the trouble you would have trying not to be. Of all the varied alternative ways you could spend your entire lifetime, there is none more exciting, more fun, more satisfying, intriguing, gripping, more absorbing, more adventuresome, more delightful than the quest for ultimate truth, beauty, and goodness, for the living will of the living God, for spiritual values and living thereby. There is a purpose for your life. And if you will seek it, you can and will discover it. But how? How can you find the will of God? The same way you can find out a telephone number from the operator when you dial long-distance information. Ask. Jesus said, seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given you. Knock and the door will be opened. The question is whether you are ready, prepared for the answer. But if you seek, you will find. He promised that, and thereby your life will begin to change. Many assume that by sheer human resolution alone, they can solve all their problems. This is not always the case. Last January, research psychologists at the University of Wisconsin distributed questionnaires asking students what resolutions they had made on New Year's Eve, December 31st. Fifty-five of those students had resolved to lose weight. And since this is the sort of thing which can easily be checked later, those 55 students were regularly weighed during the weeks and months following. The result in this particular study, none of the students lost any significant amounts of weight. Many of them continued to gain weight. Wishing alone is not enough to change one's life. There must exist more than that. An interior motivational dynamic, some energy sufficient to make things happen, to change things. This is just a fraction of that to which Jesus referred when he spoke of the importance of faith. By faith, you begin to tap the motivational resources latent in your life. You begin to discover that you are possessed of energies long unsuspected, that the concept of the kingdom of God being within you Within you, this very instant, God is your father, man is your brother, God has a will for your life and eternal life beyond this one if you will choose to be true to the best you know and ultimately to be therefore perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect. This new vital perspective on life and on yourself will so revitalize your attitude that you will begin to think and act and react in a different fashion. You will begin to deal with every problem and issue differently. You will have discovered a source of inner motivation which will reorient your outward actions. You will have begun to live as the son or daughter of God you are. Years ago in England, a visitor in a coal mining area remarked to a villager about the many mules he had seen grazing in the pastures that Sunday afternoon. He was told that those mules work in the mines all during the week for six solid days in the darkness below, and that if they were not brought out into the sunlight at least once a week, they would go blind. Many a person has lived long in inner darkness, in selfishness, depression, hatred, despair. 
But lest you be blinded by it all, I invite you to step into the light, to claim and to live the truth of the love of God and the love of people, to find the God who long ago found you, to give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. This is the supreme delight of existence. This is what it's all about. Finding and knowing God, living with a sense of profound purpose in your existence, with faith, with a sense of joy, knowing who you are, why you're here, where you came from, and where you're going. Empowered, literally, from on high and within, by the very source of energy who brought this universe to be. Belief may change your mind, but faith can change your life. An eagle could fall off a cliff, and if its wings were unextended, would fall to the earth, plummet to the rocks below, and be dashed to death. But if it would extend its wings, the eagle would be saved. A bird possesses wings, but will fall if it does not use them. You possess faith, but you must use it. Extend your wings, begin to soar, begin to live as the child of God you were born to be, and in truth, you are. Faith mobilizes the total spectrum of the human personality. It's more than mere belief. Your beliefs may influence your way of thinking, but faith transforms your way of living. What emotion can only wish were true, and the mind dares only hope is true, your faith has the courage to know is true, to experience. Your soul can crave the truth, your intellect can seek the truth, but only by faith can you live the truth? Faith is the certainty of more than your mind can conceive, the conviction of more than your logic can prove, the knowing of more than your reason reveals. It is living boldly, joyously, as the son or daughter of God you really are. But there are many who declare that this is an entire generation, essentially without such spiritual conviction or faith. Is it true? What are the attitudes of modern youth toward religion? What do they think about it? How do they practice it? Do they practice it at all in any great numbers? One recent survey of high school and college students has revealed that religion is very much an active force among the young. Nearly half of all high school and college students polled replied that they attended religious services weekly and only 10% said they never attended formal religious observances. One young person interviewed said, religion teaches us that this life on earth is not the final life. And a girl in her early 20s said, God is my reason for life and my purpose for living. Sociologists discovered in this recent study that religion was most important to young people whose families were deeply religious and who shared their faith among themselves. But most of the youth polled said they felt organized religion was not at all as important as personal religion, 58% of these young people held to the belief that people tend to become more religious as they grow older. Why is it that countless young people are disillusioned with the more traditional, formal, organized forms of religion while turning expectantly toward those forms of faith which extend the promise of a personal, experiential encounter with God? Having personally spent thousands of hours talking with thousands of high school and college students, it is my observation and my conviction that those who are seeking spiritually are primarily seeking not for intellectual creeds and theological formulae, but for a profound certitude of soul, for the life transformative realization of who and what and why they are, for the discovery personally of the reality of God. Anyone would think it odd to meet a person who loved restaurants, loved to go to them, read their menus, talk to the waiters and waitresses, study the decor, and sniff at the scent of the cooking food, but never wanted to eat anything. Yet this is precisely the behavior of some religionists. They attend their religious services every week, admire the flowers, are pleased by the singing, enjoy the diction and elocution of the speaker, and compliment the architecture, but without ever really partaking of religion, without ever profoundly involving themselves in the ineffable experience of finding and knowing God. This is absurd because the joy of faith is a joy which can only be had by you, by your faith, not by somebody else's. 
If you're hungry, all the food in the world I eat will not satiate your appetite, and all the scripture reading and hymn singing and hallelujahing of everybody else in the world will never compare with the utter delight which inheres in the finding and knowing of God in yourself and for yourself. The kingdom of God is within you. Thus, the full range of your total human potential is spiritually incredible. Consider that one of the persistent passions of all of humankind is the quest to be the best or the most or the champion. According to the editors of the Guinness Book of World Records, some of the more peculiar achievements of modern men and women have included the World Goldfish Swallowing Championship, a record held by a man who swallowed 225 live goldfish in a single day, a man who ate 16 ounces of grapes with seeds in 86 seconds and spat out all the seeds as he did it. Another chap who ensnarfed 49 bananas in only 39 minutes. A man who swallowed 60 pickled onions in 15 minutes and 12 seconds. Another man who gulped 24 raw eggs in 10 seconds. And a woman who drank 76 cups of tea, each one a third of a pint, and did it all in a single sitting. Ponder what people will do in order to become famous. If humankind sought for truth... As valiantly as for world records, this would be rather a different sort of world. If the same sort of single-minded dedication necessary to swallow 225 live goldfish in one day or 60 pickled onions in 15 minutes or 76 cups of tea at one sitting were turned to the changing of this world, this world would be something else altogether. It is not that human beings do not possess the energy, the ingenuity, or the persistence to make this world new. It is rather that human beings do not possess the motivation. Every time somebody breaks another world record, he or she attests once again to the astonishing resources and potentials of human beings, however peculiarly misused those resources and potentials may be. What humanity has lacked has been the motivation the interior commitment of mind and soul and spirit to live for goodness, truth, and beauty, for the love of God and the love of man. It was to this that Jesus of Nazareth addressed himself. There can come an interior rebirth, a spiritual renaissance within you as an individual which can utterly transform the way you fundamentally are, the way you think and feel and act and react. Because you can discover who and what and why you were created to be. Begin to live as a child of the infinite, a son or daughter of the Most High God. This is the supreme joy of life. This is yours for the having, if you will have it. It is yours for the choosing, if you will choose it. And the choice to choose it is yours right here and now. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation, nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.